morning, TGH. Good morning. Please stand with us as we worship the Lord. We have so much to be grateful for, so much to praise him for. We're going to give God glory, the glory that he deserves, the glory that he's due. And it's our privilege to do that today. So before we start worshiping together, I, I want to read from Luke 17. It's a story about giving God glory and thanks for what he's done. Thank you. So uh, feel free to follow along. It's Luke 17, verses 11 through 19. And I'm going to be reading from the CSB version. So the scripture says, while traveling to Jerusalem, he passed between Samaria and Galilee. As Jesus entered a village, 10 men with leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and raised their voices saying, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he told them, go and show yourselves to the priest. And while they were going, they were cleansed. But one of them, seeing that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice gave glory to God. He fell face down at his feet, thanking him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus said, we're not ten cleansed. Where are the nine? Didn't any return to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he told him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has saved you. That question that Jesus asked, didn't any return to give glory to God except this foreigner? When I first read that, I was convicted because I'm like, I don't want... Jesus to be asking, didn't you return to give glory to God, knowing what he's done for me, knowing all that he's done, all that he continues to do, knowing how he saved me, you know, I don't want my Lord to ask me, didn't you return to give glory? And this song that we're about to sing together is all about crying out to God, because even if we don't, the rocks will do it for us, and we don't want anybody to give God glory for us. That's our, our purpose, is to give him glory. And so we're going to do that today. And, and knowing um, just with this scripture and, and what we read and learned, we don't want to be like the nine who, who weren't grateful, who didn't return to give God glory. We want to be like the one who did what, what they knew would please our Lord. So sing this with me. What you done for me? Knew so much that goes and set me free. Broke me and gave me the victory. I've got a reason, a reason to praise. I can't forget what my eyes have seen. What seemed impossible, I believe. Look at my life, we got the story. I got a reason, a reason to praise. So I won't.
What's up, TGH? Good morning. So glad that you can join us on this holiday weekend. My name is Nate. I'm one of the pastors here. I just want to give a special welcome to you, especially if you are brand new. We are so glad that you are here. On your way out, we actually have a free gift for you on the Connect table, so be sure you grab that on your way out. I hope you all have had a great uh, week this week. Um, for those of you who came in late, we did not have coffee. We do have coffee for you now, so if you need to go grab some, grab some. So what I want you to do, I want you to greet someone next to you. Ask them, are, they, are you a coffee person? Are you a tea person? Or are you like, none of that person? And if you need to get some coffee, go get it. coffee person myself. I gotta have my coffee. Gotta have my coffee in the morning with a lot of cream and sugar. My man, if you are new with us or if you're old, a way that you can get connected with our church community is through the Connect card. The Connect card, um, if you need one, it's on the Connect table when you walk in in the lobby. That's a place where you can share your email with us. You can get on our newsletter and hear what's going on. You can also sign up to serve on any of our teams. You can also share any prayer requests or praise reports that you have. on the, Y'all, the Connect card has it all, okay? So whatever you need, Connect card, okay? You can get it at the Connect table in the lobby. Um, so now I want to let you know about a few things going on in the life of our church. First thing is that today is Kids Family Sunday. So you, yes, give it up for our kids ministry, first of all. So usually we have a full kids ministry happening every Sunday, but this Sunday they're uh, having a rest for our kids team, the volunteers that are doing that. So in the kids space, which is in a classroom over uh, to your right over here, um, if you have kids with you, welcome. We're so glad you're here. Um, but if you need to step out, we have the, a live stream of the service going on in that classroom. So if you need a space to, to cry, to play, to have a snack, go ahead and take advantage of that. Uh, next thing I want to let you know about is our next members meeting. Where's, where's our members at? Our next members meeting is December 3rd. So if you are a member of TGH, please plan to attend. It's going to be right after service next Sunday. Um, right in this space. It'll be great. Super easy. Um, if you're not a member and you're interested in becoming one, also not uh, super complicated, you can find out all the information on our website, thegatheringharlem.com slash membership. And if you're curious, what, what, are, what, what is this church's uh, beliefs about? You can read through all of our core beliefs. You can read through what it means to be a member, what our obligations are to one another, what leadership's obligations are to you, all of that good stuff. Membership is all about communicating a commitment to a church. So if TGH really is your church home, make it official, become a member, all right? Last thing I want to let you know about is things we got going on in December, okay? December 10th, okay? Mark that in your calendar. Pull out your calendar right now if you need to. December 10th, we're having our Christmas service and a Christmas party right after service, okay? Yeah, get yourself ready, okay? We're going to have an RSVP for this on our website this week, but... Uh, for right now, just save the date, December 10th. That's where the kids' ministry is going to have a little something special for us in service. 
celebrating uh, the birth of Jesus. And then we're going to have a party afterwards here at PS92. So make sure you mark your calendar for that. All right, that's all I have for you. I'm going to welcome up uh, Pastor Charles, and he's going to lead us in a time of generosity. Let's give it up for Pastor Charles. Yo, 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 good morning, TGH. How y'all doing? Y'all good? Hey, I'm so grateful to be here this morning. Um, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving week. Uh, before I move us into generosity, I just wanted to like really highlight and shout you all out because last week we talked about all the different places that you could serve in our church and we encouraged you to express interest and to sign up. And we got a lot of signups for the different ministries. So just one, one last time, I want you guys to make some noise for yourself for signing up to serve our church cannot function without you all giving your time, your gifts, and your efforts in service to the church. So I just want to appreciate you guys for signing up to serve. And also, last week, we talked about the importance of generosity, and you guys gave in great numbers last week. I just want to celebrate that, our generosity to the church, our service to the church. I want you guys to know that I don't take that for granted, we don't take that for granted, and that is why this church exists. So big shouts, shouts out to you guys. Y'all the real MVPs, I promise you. I love you guys for that. So as we transition into generosity, I want you to get a gift in your hand if it's your time to give. And I just want you to reflect on, especially this week, where we're supposed to be in a season of being grateful, in a season of being thankful. But oftentimes we're reminded of all of the things that we take for granted. As I was spending time with my family and eating and enjoying that time, I was on social media and I was seeing different people. This was not the most happy and joyful time for them. Some people are reminded of people that they've lost or they're reminded of the people that they don't have. And it's so easy to just be in your own little bubble and not be grateful for the things that we take for granted each day. So while you're giving and while we're continuing to service, I want you to think about the little things and the things that you don't even realize that are blessings that God continues to give, but we just keep going and we don't even realize that we have a lot to be thankful for. Do I have somebody you can think of one thing that you thank God for? Just one, it don't gotta be 10, 50, 100. I got one thing I can thank God for. So we're gonna give, there's a few different ways you can give. You can give on thegatheringharlem.com, you can click give. We actually have the buckets that we will be passed around if you wanna give a physical gift. Then also on the screen, there's gonna be a number that you can text so you can give that way. So I'm gonna give you a few moments to get your gifts together and then we're gonna to pray together over our gifts. Careful, I might start freestyling real quick. Y'all dropping this beat, hold on. I'm not gonna do it, because they recording, and they'll play it back, and they'll make a clip. I'm gonna look crazy. No, 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 hey, hey. No, y'all not, not gonna get me to do it. No, 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 no. Uh, okay, uh, about to give. It's for Christ I live. No, 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 no I'm not gonna do it, okay. Hey, okay. Let us pray over our gifts. <laughs> they almost, Alex, they almost got me. They almost got me. <sighs> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for letting us know what our gifts are and when to not move forward with certain things, God. Yes, you've anointed us for certain things and other things you have not gifted us for. But dear Heavenly Father, we also just want to re be reminded of the things that we take for granted each day. The breath in our lungs, the food on our table, the friends, the family that we still have, the fact that you brought us to another day. We thank you for this community. We thank you for our church, that we have good soil to plant a seed in. And every Sunday and even throughout the week, you continue through your Holy Spirit to empower us to make disciples 
through your church. So dear God, we offer these gifts to you and we pray that it would be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone say amen. Amen. All right, let's head back into worship. Everybody stand on your feet and let's get ready to give God a great praise. GTH, how we doing? We're gonna continue in this vein of just worship and thanksgiving, just knowing that we're in this, this week is thanksgiving and knowing that every good and perfect gift comes from God, comes from above. He supplies all of our needs, he's our Jehovah Jireh. There's nothing, not our jobs, not our intellect, not our, our cars, our clothes, anything that we get from our own um, power, it re really comes of God. And I really want y'all to reflect on that as we sing about Jireh, our provider, the one that has given me, given us everything that we need. So if you know this song, sing with us. It's uh, one of our church favorites, so I hope y'all just enjoy and really press into this time of worship. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Going through a storm, but I won't go down. I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me out. You
much more will He call you? How much more will He call you? If you watch it, it's over. Hammer is barrel. How much more does He love you? How much more does He love you? If He dresses, if he dresses the living. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest praise for a God who's worthy to be praised. I don't want to waste too much time. I'm so excited to get into the word. Let's just get straight into it. But I can't get past the fact that the song reminds us that in every circumstance, God is enough. There's always something that we want. There's always more that he could give us. But what if all we have is him? Is that enough? Is that enough to satisfy your soul? Is that enough to bring peace into your heart? Is that enough to give you something to praise about? God is enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go with me to Matthew chapter 11 as we continue this Follow Me series. We've been walking through the book of Matthew, not only on Sunday, but in our small groups throughout the week. And we've learned about Jesus calling his disciples and starting his ministry and going from city to city, 
healing and preaching the word. And in Matthew 11, we find him in a peculiar situation because though many miracles and messages have been witnessed and heard, we find Jesus experiencing the challenges of being persecuted and rejected. No matter how good he is, no matter how miraculous his ministry is, there are people who still persecute and reject him. In the beginning of the chapter, it was an unusual person who was questioning him. It was John the Baptist, the, the brother that paved the way for Jesus. And his whole ministry was preparing people for Jesus to come. Even John the Baptist asked, are you really the Messiah? Or should we look for another? So you can imagine in the middle of his ministry, all that Jesus was dealing with. Rejection, persecution, people doubting him. But then he gives a prayer that the scriptures call the prayer of thanksgiving. In the middle of the chaos, in the middle of all the things he was dealing with, he prayed to the Lord. In verse 25, Matthew 11, if you're there, say, you're... Verse 25 says, and at that time, Jesus prayed this prayer. O oh, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you. Somebody say thank you. Sometimes that's a good enough prayer by itself. He said, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever, for revealing them to the childlike. Yes, Father, it pleased you to do it this way. My Father has entrusted everything to me. No one truly knows the Son except the Father. And no one truly knows the Father except the Son and those whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then Jesus said, this is going to encourage somebody in the room, come to me, all who are weary and carry heavy burdens. Is that anybody in the room right now? And Jesus says, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your soul. Last verse. For my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, that we get to look into a very burdensome moment in your life and ministry. And how even though you were being persecuted and rejected and being misunderstood, you stopped everything and just gave the Lord thanks. And you say, God, even though they don't understand, I believe that you and I are on the same page when it comes to the will of your life. And I have disciples who are dealing with the same things. They are burdened, they're tired, they're laboring. And I wanna offer them the gift of rest. So dear Heavenly Father, I pray for someone in this room, in this Thanksgiving after season, all the things that we prayed for and asked for. Above all, Lord, we pray for rest in our relationship with you. Life can be so burdensome, our lives can be so heavy. And Jesus understands that. And there's someone in this room today who needs to receive the gift of rest. Dear Heavenly Father, bless my words. Remove me out of the way and let your Holy Spirit speak. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Everyone say amen. All right, you may take a seat all over the building. This journey that we call life is complicated. What we have all come to realize about life is that no matter how much you plan and prepare, you can't avoid the ups and downs of life. We as followers of Christ must always strive to understand what is and isn't the will of God for our lives. Because even as we go through the ups and downs, in many ways, you can misunderstand what God is doing in your life if you're not constantly seeking him to reveal his will to you. Because there are things that we go through that are just occurrences in life. But then there are things that the Lord is doing in our lives that actually align with the ministry and call of our lives. And we would love for all those things to be pleasant. 
But God also often uses the challenging aspects of our lives to do his ministry. We find Jesus in his ups and downs in his life. The scripture says he had been teaching and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom from city to city. He even went back to his hometown and proclaimed the gospel. And it says when he went back to his hometown, he had never experienced more rejection in any other city than his very own hometown. But he continued to preach and people continued to be healed and miracles continued to happen and people continued to witness these things. But still, people still misunderstood him, rejected him, and persecuted him. I found it very touching that at the beginning of chapter 11, it was John the Baptist who was questioning whether Jesus was the Messiah. If anybody should be sure of Jesus being the Messiah, it should be John the Baptist. His whole ministry was paving the way for Jesus. When Jesus came, John humbled himself because he believed that Jesus was the one that everyone was waiting for. But not in, Ma in Matthew chapter 11. In Matthew 11, John sends his disciples to Jesus and says, are you the Messiah or should we search for another? <laughs> I can only imagine what Jesus may have been feeling in that moment. That the people closest to him were questioning and doubting him. And then he even noticed that as he was sending out his disciples, they were dealing with hardships because of their connection to him. Many people did not understand what God was doing through his ministry, and they chose to evaluate things through human understanding. But Jesus, right after reflecting all these things, he stopped and he gave thanks to his father. Do I have anybody in the room where you've been in a life situation where you really just have one question to God? What is really going on right now? What is this? Especially when you believe you're doing what he's called you to do. I'm living for you. I'm giving my time, my efforts. I'm praying to you. I'm giving my life to you. But life continues to give me ups and downs. And people who I thought would believe in me and support me and encourage me, those are the very ones who I receive rejection and doubt from. And what we learn from Jesus in this moment is, as you serve him, as you live this life, there will be times where you have to simply lean back into him for affirmation that you're on the right path. Let me just encourage you right now. Everybody's not going to understand God's will for your life. Not everybody's going to be able to affirm what God is doing. Why? Because God does peculiar things through the people that he serves. It's not always going to make sense to everybody else. The decisions you make, the moves you make, the people you associate with, the things you invest in. Not everybody's going to understand God's will for your life. But just like Jesus... We have to be able to stop and reconnect with the one who we believe is leading us in the first place. Look back at verse 25. I want to give just two points today because we don't have a lot of time. But my first point, as Jesus reflects, he thanks God. This is crazy. For the fact that people don't understand God's will for his life. It's a very weird thing to thank God for. I've never thanked God like, hey, God, thank you for allowing people to misunderstand me. Thank you for allowing people to reject me. Thank you for people not being able to affirm what I'm doing with my life. Never have I thanked God for that. But look at what Jesus says in verse 25. He says, and at that time, Jesus prayed this prayer. He says, oh, Father, pause. He started his prayer with acknowledging the relationship that he had with God. He recognized that he was the son and he was speaking to his father. Jesus starts by calling God Father. That's very important because when we start our prayers, oftentimes we don't acknowledge the intimate relationship that we have with the person we're talking to. 
You're not just talking to someone far off in the sky who's looking down and not communing and walking with you. You're talking to your father, someone who intimately knows and loves you, especially in moments where you feel confused and misunderstood. Jesus says, oh, father. And then after he calls him father, look what he calls him. He says, Lord. So first and foremost, he acknowledges their relationship. And then he acknowledges God's authority over his situation. Oh, I'm going to pause right there. Y'all missed it. Before he even really got into his prayer, his acknowledgement of God said everything that we needed to know. Oh, Father, we have a relationship. Lord, you're in control of everything. How you acknowledge God says a lot about how you view your situation. I'm talking to my dad. But my dad is also in control of everything. I'm talking to my father, and I'm surprised about what's going on in my life. But he isn't surprised because my father is Lord and all-knowing. Is this encouraging somebody in the room? He says, God, I know who you are to me, and I know that you are in control. Jesus knows that his ministry is pleasing to his father because before he started his ministry, the father affirmed him and said, I'm well pleased with you. So before he was rejected, he was accepted. And I want to encourage all of you, every believer, every son, every daughter, before you were rejected, you were accepted. God created you in his image, and when you gave your life to him, he accepted you, and he is pleased with you, not because of anything you've done, but because you accept the free gift that comes from what Jesus did. Somebody say amen. But what Jesus is actually thanking God for is this gift, write this down, this is the first point, the gift of revelation. The gift of revelation. He was thanking God that there were some people who misunderstood him, but he only was thanking God for that because he understood that that understanding comes from revelation. We will always misunderstand the will of God when all we have is information. God shows himself through revelation. Brando, I got to play that back on replay. No, Bell, I got to play that, play that back on replay. You will always misunderstand God's will for your life if all you have is information. Because God doesn't reveal himself solely through information. God reveals himself through revelation. Look at what Jesus says. Look at what Jesus says. He says, You've hid things from those who think they're wise and clever, but you've revealed them to those who are childlike. So God has a will that he reveals to certain people. And Jesus is saying those who think they're wise, those who think they got it all together, those who think they're clever, those who think they're in control and you're not Lord, you don't reveal yourselves to them. But for those who are childlike, you reveal these things to them. An understanding of God's will cannot be achieved on a human level. God must bestow the gift of revelation to you. Jesus thanks God for choosing to reveal himself to people who aren't puffed up and consider themselves wise and clever. But he reveals himself to those who are childlike. Revelation in the Greek translates as to reveal what is hidden to make plain what is immaterial or invisible. God's will for your life will not be understood just through human understanding. You have to seek him to reveal his will for your life. And Jesus understood that. So that's why when people rejected him and people questioned him, he didn't second guess the will on his life because God had already revealed it to him before they rejected him. And I wish that was the same with us because we love God's will for our life until it gets hard. Oh, we love God's will. We shout in church. We praise God. We love it until his will puts us in a situation that's uncomfortable, that leaves us misunderstood, and we have to separate ourselves from certain things. We have to discipline ourselves. It gets really tough when we have to accept his will. But I love what he says. He said God reveals himself to those who are childlike. If you're taking notes, what that means is God reveals himself to believers who trust him the same way a child trusts their parent. 
That's why Jesus said, Father, when you're living this life and you're trying to figure out what God is doing, he'll reveal things to you. And if you need every answer to your question, it'll always be hard to obey. Oh, I'm I'm, going to pause because that really, that touches my heart because I want every answer to these. God, I'll obey you, but can you answer this, 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 that, this, 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 this. He tells me something that he wants me to do, but I always have an interview before I do it. I'm like, God, that's great. Let me just, let me run through this real quick. How can I? But a good child, when their parent tells them what to do, even though they don't understand why, they trust that their parent knows better than them. A truly obedient child trusts their parents' wisdom over them. Me and my wife were flying home uh, the other day from our Thanksgiving trip, and we were in our row, and me, I'm like Erica Badu. I just need a window seat. Don't want nobody. Oh, okay. All my holy people in the room, they don't listen. They just listen to gospel music. It's fine. (laughs) But I got my window seat, and I love my window seat because I can easily just, if it's an hour, two-hour flight, I can easily just lean to the right and fall asleep. But on this flight, we just happened to sit a row in front of a mother who had a child who decided nobody's sleeping on this flight. Nobody. This is not your nap flight. This child could not understand why he had to sit down during the flight. So the whole time, it was just crying, temper tantrum, yelling. And all you heard the mom was saying was, everybody's sitting down. You have to sit down. But the child did not want to obey because they did not understand why they had to sit down. All you heard what the child was saying was, why? I don't want to. I don't want to. It's because they were leaning on their understanding. This is uncomfortable. I don't got no leg room. I don't know this person sitting next to me. This is weird. I want to stand up and walk around the plane. I want to do what I want to do. But the mother was saying, sitting down is the best thing for you to do in this situation. And it's weird that in that situation, it almost contradicts what Jesus said. Because in that situation, being childlike did not work out. And I wonder how many of us, sons of God, daughters of God, are that type of child where we're leaning on our own understanding and we're so frustrated and we're so uncomfortable and we're living a life of wrestling with God, but it's really not because life is so hard. It's because we don't want to accept the will for our lives in that situation. I don't want to sit down. I don't want to do this. God, why? Why do I have to do this? This doesn't fit. When we could just be the type of child that trust that our parents knows better than us. If the child would have sat down, everybody on the plane would have had a better experience. Oh, that's, wow, thank you, Lord. Their disobedience impacted everybody else's experience. Lord, show us how our obedience impacts everybody else. Lord, don't let my woo, don't let my unwillingness to be uncomfortable block you from blessing those around me. Oh, in that situation, I was reminded of what Jesus was saying about us being childlike, but there's a certain child that he wants. He wants a child that doesn't think they're wise and know better than him, but he wants the child who will obey because they trust him. Look at verse 26. I'm trying to glide through these. I'm sorry. Yes, it says, Father, if it please you, it please you to do it this way. Watch what he says in verse 27. He says, my father has entrusted everything to me. No one truly knows the son except the father. This is really getting deep in Revelation right here. And then he says, and no one truly knows the father except the son. But then he said, and, somebody said, and. He says, first, no one knows the Father like I do. And no one knows me like the Father. But then he says, I know the Father, and there's another group of people that also know the Father. He says, there's the people who the Son chooses to do what? Reveal him. 
The son knows the father, the father knows the son, and then there are people who also know the father. And it's because Jesus revealed him to us. Oh, this gift of revelation. Watch this. Somebody take a note. No one truly knows the son except the father. And no one truly knows the father except the son. And then there's this special group, those who Jesus chooses to reveal him to. So not only do you need revelation to understand the will of the Father, you need Jesus to give you revelation in order to understand the Father. So you, you need Jesus to understand the will for your life, and you need Jesus to understand whose will it is. Jesus not only gives us salvation and relationship, but he also gives us the ability to understand who God is. You understand the Father because you're related to the Son. Some of y'all, you didn't go to your family's house. You went to a friend's giving or you went to one of your other friend's family's house. And without the connection of your friend, you would not be at the table eating. You were able to commune with that family because of the connection with your friend. The same with God. We have relationship with God. We know him. We commune with him. But it's not because we just walked into the house and, and we're able to commune with the father. It's because we know his son. And because we have connection to his son, we can fellowship with God, know God, and know his will for our lives. This is why it's so important for you to make your life about getting into a deeper relationship with the son. Because if you don't understand your life and God's will for your life, it's because you're not leaning into the Son enough. Lean into Jesus. As we follow Jesus, our prayer should be to, that he reveals himself to us and that he shows our will, that, that he shows his will to us for our life. There is no such thing as a relationship with God or even a true understanding of God unless you receive it through Jesus. I'm going to say that one more time. There is no such thing as a relationship with God, the Father, or even a true understanding of God, the Father, unless you receive it through Jesus, the Son. It's all through Jesus. Jesus is the bridge between us and the Father. Jesus is the great reconciler. Jesus is the friend who invites us into his Father's house. And because we were invited in through Jesus, we get to know Jesus more. And then we also connect to the creator who the will for our life we're trying to understand. Somebody say amen. I got I to gotta move on. We only got a few more minutes. Second point comes from verse 28. We talked about this gift of revelation. And just really quick, I just want to pause and let you guys know that all throughout next year, we're going to be having corporate Bible studies every month. And we'll be able to go deeper into these type of concepts. I know I kind of glided through that, but I, I don't want you to miss this concept and this truth of revelation. We're going to have a whole corporate Bible study over the understanding of God's revelation. Main point number two, Jesus stops praying and thanking God for the gift of revelation. And then he offers us all a gift. And this is where I want to close us out and we can pray together. Verse 28, Jesus says... After thanking God and he prayed, he then begins to preach to those who are around him. Verse 28 says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will, somebody say, I will give you rest. When Jesus says, I will, he's making a promise. He says, if you come to me with your burdens, if you come to me with all of your labor, if you come to me with what's heavy, I will give you rest. That's the second point. We talked about the gift of revelation. Write down the gift of rest. And in each verse, verse 28, verse 29, and verse 30, we see Jesus give a special invitation. In verse 28, the invitation is, come to me and I will give you rest. So he's essentially saying, don't deal with life's demands without me. I know life is heavy. I know it's burdensome, especially if you're following me. I know what comes with that. But I never called you to deal with life by yourself. He says, don't deal with these things without me. Give it all to me. 
When you deal with things, don't try to be like what I said before, the ones who think they're clever and wise, and try to figure it out on your own. The scripture says, take everything to the Lord in prayer. Jesus just exemplified that. When he had an opportunity to be stressed and feel rejected, he stopped and thanked God and prayed to him. And like us, he was dealing with the burdens of life. Verse 28 says, come to me and I will give you rest. Look at what verse 29 says. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. What is a yoke? A yoke, back in biblical times, would connect two animals together so that they could walk in the same direction. If I'm yoked to you, we're connected by the neck. So if I go left, this animal has to go left too. So there's no such thing as being yoked and not going the same direction. So Jesus says, before you make a move, bring your burdens to me and then take my yoke upon you. Why? Because you're about to make a decision and you need to know that your decision is following me. If you're yoked with Jesus, you won't be found going the direction he's not calling you to go. Isn't that most of our question? God, what should I do? Where should I go? What do you want me to do? But if you're yoked to him, you will always be found going where he wants you to go. Why? Because it's not your decision to move. I'm yoked to him, so he just moves and I go with him. I just follow his leading because I'm yoked to him. Look at what it says. And learn from me. Oh, this is the tough truth, but hear this. Your situation, though it's hard, the Lord often disguises his greatest lessons in hardships. So while you're taking his yoke, he wants you to be learning. He wants you to grow from what you're dealing with. He says, learn from me. And then, this is what he says, learn. I'm gentle, lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. In your hardship, when you take your, his yoke upon you, you are learning more about him because you're close to him. Verse 29, basically, he's saying, let me take the wheel and you sit in the passenger seat and learn from me. Then just rest knowing that I got you. A lot of us want to be like this with our life. We want to decide every turn signal. We want to decide everywhere we go. And we just want Jesus to be MapQuest or to be Google Maps or be our GPS. I want to drive. You just tell me where to go. When Jesus is saying, let me drive your life. And you sit in the passenger seat. Because when you're in the passenger seat, you just have to trust the driver. I don't know about you, but I'd rather Jesus be at the will of my life than me. <laughs> I, I got my license when I was 15. I still don't know if I can really drive. <laughs> like, they need to check on me. But every time I've trusted Jesus with the will of my life, I've always ended up in the right destination, where he wants me to be, in the right time. Somebody say amen. amen. Last one, and we're going to pray and get out of here. Verse 30 says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is easy light. Jesus is saying, when you yoke yourself to me, it's easy to follow me. The closer you are to him, the easier it is to follow him. But he's not acting like the burden of following him is not hard. He's not saying being a Christian is easy because he's not a man that he should lie. But look what he says. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Somebody write this down. Life is hard. <laughs> I, I, we can just stop there. That's, that's truth. That's an amen right there. <laughs> Life is hard, but it's lighter when you let Jesus carry it with you. He doesn't always promise to remove what's heavy. What he does promise is to carry it with you. Me and my wife, I told you guys a few weeks ago that, especially now that we just had our Thanksgiving meals, we said we were committed to going to the gym. Keep praying because we still are working on that commitment. We haven't quite made it to the gym just yet. But I remember there was a time where I used to go to the gym all the time. And I was very consistent. And I remember hating it just as much as I hate it right now. Working out is not of the Lord, but he just gives us the strength to do it. 
And I just remember that with every time I made progress and stuff got easier, the next thing to do was to add more weight. Once the weight got easy, you add more. Ooh, somebody feels like that with their life right now. Every time I feel like I got it, every time I feel like it's easy, they add more. And that's how you get stronger. You don't get stronger by continuing to lift what's light. You get stronger by when what was heavy before gets light, you add more. But when, what I really remember was the reason I was able to be so consistent is because I never went to the gym by myself. It was always heavy. It was always hard. I always wanted to give up. I always did not want to do it. But it was better when I went with somebody. And when I was on the bench press and I was pressing my 250. <laughs> when I was pressing, nobody believed that. Nobody did. Just go with me for the sake of the story. When I was pressing my 300, and everybody was like, oh my goodness, this is crazy. When I was bench pressing this crazy weight, I was able to trust that I could continue to lift when I had a spotter. When I was lifting by myself, I wouldn't be comfortable lifting the heaviest weight. But I would be willing to lift the heavy weights when I had a spotter. Because if it ever got to the point where I was too weak and I couldn't continue to push and I wanted to give up and I feel like it was going to weigh me down, I knew that I had somebody right there with their hands on the weight that I was lifting and they would not let the weight weigh me down. And in many times I thought I was lifting it, but I realized my spotter was pulling it up with me. And there's somebody in this room and you're lifting the weights of life and you know it's heavy and it is a burden and it is hard. And Jesus is just saying, I'm waiting on you to let me carry it with you. I never said this life would be easy. I never said that I would remove all hardships. What I did say, is that I'll walk with you, I'll carry it with you, and I will make your weight lighter. I need everybody in this room to stand up all over the room so we can get out of here. But Jesus, his promise is that rest will come when you allow him to carry your burdens with you. I want to give an invitation today, and I want to pray with somebody today who you hear this invitation, and this isn't mine, this is Jesus. I'm taking it straight from the scripture. Jesus said, I see the weight of life. I'm literally experiencing it as I'm a human. I have to stop and pray to the Father when things get heavy. So Jesus exemplified what it meant to pray to God when things got heavy. But then he extended the gift of rest. And that only comes with you coming and carrying your burdens to him. And saying, God, life is hard. It's heavy. And I don't want to lift this by myself. I need you. I will be the child who stops trying to get every answer and figure it out. And just trust you with my life. Lord, reveal to me your will. Lord, help me carry this weight. If you're not going to remove it, help me carry this. So today, we have two invitations. If you've never given your life to Christ, and you don't know him to be this promise keeper who will give you rest, we would love to pray with you and let you know what it means to have a relationship with the Son so you can have a relationship with the Father and have his will for your life revealed to you. Oh, I love that. But then there's somebody in this room and just like the disciples Jesus was ministering to, you've been living life. You've been trying to please God. It's just been heavy. It's just hard. It's just burdensome. Life is life. And you just need to trust Jesus with your burdens 
and for his yoke to be upon you so he can lead you and he can guide your steps and you no longer have to be Lord of your life (laughs) because you trust him that he's in control. Is there one today who needs prayer, who needs to come and lay your burdens before the Lord, who's tired of lifting life's weights by yourself? I'm going to do a corporate prayer, and then we're going to go on to worship. But at any time, if you need to come down and pray, we will be at the altar for you. So right where you are, because you know what it is. You know what the weight is. You know what you're dealing with. You know what is burdening you. You know what's stressing you. Get that thing on your mind. And as I pray, I want you, if you feel led, to bring those things to the altar. Right where you are, where you bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that even as you were God wrapped in flesh in your ministry. The gospel doesn't leave out the times where you had burdens, the times where you felt rejected and persecuted, and the times you had to pause and just thank God and ask for his help. And dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your invitation to all of the people in this room that if we're heavy, that if we're burdened, you will give us rest if we come to you. So dear Heavenly Father, as we continue to pray and worship, I pray that at least one today would ask, what must I do to be saved, to have a relationship with my Father? I want him to reveal his will for my life, and I really want that gift of revelation and rest. Dear God, we love you, and we thank you That even in the hardships, there's much that we can learn about you and your will. Dear God, we close this prayer celebrating for the person who's going to leave here a little bit lighter because they trusted in Jesus. It's in his matchless name we pray. Everyone say amen. Amen, amen, amen. We are at the altar. And if you need prayer, you can start to come now. Meet us at the altar. And for all of you who are staying, As we worship, even right where you are, you can start to release those things that are burdening your heart and burdening your mind. In Philippians, the scripture says, bring everything to Jesus in prayer. (laughs) And the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. So even right where you are, you can start to release those things to him. In this stressful season, there is rest available for the child of God. Hallelujah and amen. Your kindness leads me to repentance. Your goodness draws me to
Can we put our hands together? Because God is good. TGH, I'm uh, getting ready to dismiss us, but uh, I have one uh, very special thing I'd like to do for us. Um, first of all, I'd like to invite uh, someone up on stage. It's her last Sunday with us today. So, Hilda, <laughs> I'm shouting you out, girl. I want you to come up here. We've got something for you. Let's give it up for Hilda. So Hilda has uh, been a part of Teachers for a long time. She's even most recently been uh, leading our slides team. Um, she recently has stepped away from that, and she's going to be stepping away from TGH. Um, so we just wanted to honor you, let you know how thankful we are for your life, how much of a gift you have been to all of us, um, and just bless you um, as you step away. So know that we love you. You're always welcome. And um, once you join me in prayer, you can um, just reach out a hand and let's pray over Hilda today. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for your daughter, Hilda. I thank you, Father, for her life, for all that she is, for the gifts and talents and dreams and uh, abilities that you have given her because she is created in your very image. Father, I thank you for drawing her to you, Jesus. I thank you for saving her. God, I thank you for bringing her to the gathering and just letting us be um, a recipient of the, um, the woman you have made her and are making her to be. Father, we just pray a blessing over her life in every way. God, would you bless her family? Would you bless her relationships? Would you bless her home? Would you bless her finances? Would you bless her spiritual life? Father, and specifically, I pray for a season of rest. Just as Pastor Charles was talking about, let her receive a season of rest, of filling, of refilling, of restoration. Father, of restoration that she couldn't even imagine. Father, I pray that rest would come in ways she couldn't even imagine. And Father, we're so thankful for her. I pray that she would receive just the, the gratitude that we have for her. And God, we pray a blessing over her. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I'm going to uh, pray a blessing over all of us. Uh, I want to remind you, if you're brand new with us on the Connect table on your way out, you can fill out a Connect card and get a free gift, okay? So just remember to do that on your way out. Let's place our hands, uh, palms up in a posture of receiving and receive this blessing from the Lord. The Gathering Harlem, may the Lord bless you and may he keep you. May he shine on you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you and give you peace. And may you leave this place filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to trust in God because he is good. All in the matchless, in the powerful, in the resurrected name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen. Go in peace, church. <laughs>